Hello. Hello. Welcome to another episode of CJ Discovery. Today we are going to get right into things because we have a lot to do. Today we went out and got a My First Mind Blowing Science Kit. It is by Scientific Explorer. We wanted to do another one of these kits because it is the same brand as the first kit that we did and we loved that kit. Uh, now that we don't have the greeny footage, we wanted to try to do another one of these. Unlike the first kit that we did, it does actually require a few more ingredients than the other one did. The other one just had water and things like that. This one actually has some things like flour and stuff to do all of the experiments. We're going to just pick two or three to do today, maybe four, and, uh, and do those and let you discover the rest for yourself. So we're going to get right into things with my little, um, beetle, beetle, beetle. my little minion. <laughs> Time for the unboxing. Tea. Oh, while he's doing that, I've already got out the instructions. So there is quite a bit, and it's all in English, and there are pages and pages of, 12 pages of instructions. Nope, I'm sorry. 14 pages of instructions. Just like the other kit, it comes in a nice big bag. Everything is inside of here. There are no loose items in the box. Go ahead, start pulling it out. And we'll open it. We have three plastic, little plastic cups. We have three test tubes. A little test tube stand. Very similar to the one before. It's very nice and sturdy. We have the same, we have a small scoop and a medium scoop. And some Q-tips. It looks like a couple plastic straws and a little dropper. Some vegetable oil. They also have several white packages of various items. As you can see, they are very nicely labeled. They're very easy to tell apart and know what you're working with. Our first experiment says that it is a test tube sunset. We are going to try to get that one done. It requires hours of letting it sit, so hopefully we can come back later and look at it. Um, but we are at least going to get it started. Let's do this. For this test, we need to have a test tube and the test tube stand. We need the polychromide crystals and the citric acid, the baking soda, two plastic cups, we need the stir sticks, and the red cabbage powder, and the medium scoop. Now, you saw the other one, you'll know I'm going to rant right now. There is a small scoop and there is a larger scoop. This is called the medium scoop. To be a medium scoop, there should be a larger scoop because medium means it should be in the middle. So this is the small scoop and the larger scoop and it makes me really fancy about that. It's really not that big of a deal. Anyway, this is the medium scoop. You need this too. It is the larger of the two scoops. And the final ingredients are water and plastic wraps. Apparently we also need the small, apparently, apparently we also need the small scoop. In the first step, we're going to fill these cups three-fourths full with warm water. It looks like there's a nice little lip here that you could probably use to go by, so we're going to do that. Woohoo! All right, we have our cups full of three-fourths full of water. For the first step, Josh is going to add one medium scoop of baking powder. Then he's going to add two small scoops of red cabbage powder to the same cup. One. I love blood. To the second cup, Josh is going to add one medium scoop of citric acid, followed by two scoops, two small scoops of the red cabbage powder. So we have the two cups here that, that we just filled. This one is the one with the baking soda, and this is the one with the citric acid. The instructions call this one blue. Um, we had this happen before where it looked kind of purple. I think it just might be the water that we have in there because the reason it turns color is based on whether it's an acid or a base um, and that's why this is the purple like it is. So I think that just is all it is. But this is purple and this is red. That might affect our end result too because it's supposed to look like a sunset which means this should look blue. Um, from here, Josh is going to put in the polychromide crystals. He's going to put three medium scoops into uh, what they call the blue cup, what looks purple to us. And four scoops into the red cup. Okay. 
The instructions say we need to let this sit for a couple hours and let it absorb. These, these crystals will expand and absorb some of the water in it. So we're going to put them to the side and let them do some of the absorbing. <coughs> so we're going to put them to the side and let them absorb some of this and move on to our next experiment. For this experiment, we need to have the citric acid, the baking soda, the red cabbage powder, vegetable oil, a test tube, it actually says we need a test tube cap. We did not get caps in this one. Our other box, we got caps, so we know what they're supposed to look like, and there are no caps in this thing. So I'm hoping that's not going to be too much of a problem. Maybe that was a packaging error. Maybe they were supposed to be in here. I have looked through very thoroughly, though, and we do not have caps in ours. It says we need both the medium and the small scoop again, the stir sticks, and the test tube stand. So we're going to get right into this. We are making what they call an underwater volcano. Also, this one says that you need water and a clear plastic drinking cup and something to protect the ground from spills. Where we're at, we're in the basement, we are good for spills. Josh is going to fill this test tube with warm water to about one third full. Now he's going to add a small scoop of the red cabbage powder and he's supposed to stir it until it's all a uniform color. Okay, now he's going to fill the vegetable oil. It says to the lip, we're going to go a little lower than the lip just to make sure that we don't overflow too much. The next step, we're going to add some citric acid. It says that when we put it in, we're, we should see some eruption here. So Josh is going to add one medium scoop of citric acid. Look at it. It's going. It does say after the reaction dies down, you could add another scoop, so we're going to try that. We did get a little bit of a reaction there, not a terrible one. That's probably a user error. This should react. There's a reason why it shouldn't. It may be... It is bubbling there. Look at it go. Now that was adding an acid to it, and so that's what makes it turn kind of the pinkish color that it does. We are going to try to add now, it says, you're supposed to guess... What do you think is going to happen if we add a base to this now? I think it's going to... Like, what color do you think it's going to turn? It's going to turn very reddish. Do you like think... Pr really red. You think it's going to turn really red? Yeah. Um, what do you think is going to happen now that the water is really acid? If we, put it, if we put baking soda in there, what's going to happen? Bubbles are going to come up. Okay. Okay, now this is where we should get the good reaction. We've got the water with all the citric acid in there, and we are going to put in a scoop of baking soda, and let's see what happens. Three, two, one. Mm, gotta watch it fall to the ground. Oh. <laughs> Give it a minute, it's dropping. There we go. It's going, it's bubbling. There it goes. No, oh, it's going. <laughs> I'm gonna put some water in there. I'm gonna put one more scoop. Okay, did probably. I'm gonna scoop back a little bit. I'm gonna scoop back because he's gonna overflow it here. One more scoop, go. Three, two, one. There it's falling. You can see it fall into the bottom like it did before. It's right at the lip. Oh no, oh no! <laughs> and we have our underwater volcano. Alright, I'm really excited for this next one. We are going to make 
Magic Ooze. The only thing we're supposed to use from the kit is just the cornstarch. We need it to have a medium bowl and some um, an eighth a cup of water, some measuring spoons, and uh, if you could, if you want to, you can use some food coloring and something to stir with. So I have the bowl here. We are going to put in the eighth cup of warm water. Then we're supposed to stir in five tablespoons of our cornstarch mix. And then we're supposed to use our fingers to stir it all up. I'm going to let him do that part. Um, and we're going to watch what happens here. Okay, Josh is going to add the five tablespoons of cornstarch now into our bowl. We already have the one eighth cup of water in there. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Josh is going to go ahead and start mixing with his hands now. We might have a little more than an eighth of a cup in there, so we're going to try to add some more and let's see what happens. Okay, so I went back to the kitchen and got some more cornstarch because I think I actually probably added more than an eighth of a cup of water to the bowl. Um, if you measured, it would probably be a lot better. This stuff is really cool. If you can look, if you look, it looks like it's just a liquid in there. See it pouring off of Josh's fingers. But also, he can pick it up and squeeze it into a ball. So it's this real cool ooze that you can play with. The instructions talk about adding food coloring to it, and that might make it look really cool. We're not just for the sake of Josh not dyeing his hands. I think even still, we probably could have put a little more cornstarch in there. But look how it, it's, it's both between a solid and a liquid. This is called a non-Newtonian fluid, and it means the more pressure you put on it, the thicker it will become. And it says scientists still aren't sure why they do like they do. So it says you could try to think up some explanations of why that works. Maybe you'll be the person to discover why it works like that. How does it feel? Gross. <laughs> <laughs> This experiment is going to be a really nice and easy one. This kit says it's for 4 plus, so this is a really basic one, and it's a neat way to teach about how colors combine. I'm hoping it's going to come off really cool on the camera. We're going to try. Uh, what it says to do is to take three test tubes, and you're going to fill them up three fourths full with water. So I've already done it. I've already done that. And the kit gives us color changing tablets, and we're going to put a different color in each one. We're going to put a blue, a yellow, and a red into each of these tubes. Okay, we're going to put one colored tablet in each one. Go ahead. Yellow. This is the yellow going in. And we are going to put one in each tube like this. This one's going to be yellow. We're going to give those a couple seconds to fully dissolve. You can see they look really neat. As they're dissolving, they kind of create their own little bubbly stuff going on there. All right, Josh is going to give me a little help here so we can hope that this shows up on the camera real well. We've given our tube some time to dissolve. See, we have blue and red, and we have a yellow tube. Now, the point of this experiment is to see what happens when we combine colors. For the sake of the camera, Josh is going to hold up this white sheet behind us, and hopefully it'll come across a little better on camera. So what do you think is going to happen when we combine the blue... Here's the blue, here's the yellow, and we're going to put them in front of each other, and let's see what happens there. Ooh. You see what color we get there? Doesn't it look kind of green? So what do you think will happen if we take the red and put it in front of the blue? So here's our blue, and we're going to put our red in front of it. Oh, it doesn't show up on camera, I don't think, real well, but it's definitely a real... Oh, there we go. There's a real... It's a purple color. So I like that experiment because it's a real neat way to teach about primary colors and secondary colors and how they combine. This kid has, seems to have a nice range between four and up of different projects that can be done. It's been about an hour since we've put our crystals in the water. The next step is you do this next step and then it takes a while after that. So what we're going to do is we're going to do this and then we're going to come back later tonight um, after we go out for the day, we're going to come back later tonight and look at it. It says you can leave it overnight as well. So we have our two cups here. They've been sitting. I don't know if you can really see those crystals floating in there. At this point, what it tells you to do is pour off that extra water that's on there after it's been sitting for a while. So I'm going to go do that. Okay, so I poured off the extra water and we are left with two cups of this 
my cup is a nice purpley color. It again says it's supposed to be blue, but for me it turned out purple. And a cup of beautiful red crystals. These are very fun and squishy to play with. There's actually another experiment that uses them and lets the kids play with them. They're fully safe to touch. The next step in this is very easy to follow. It says to take a test tube and you're going to put halfway full of blue crystals and halfway full of red crystals. It's supposed to look like a sunset when everything's all said and done. So this is like the ocean and then the blue is supposed to be like the ocean and the red is supposed to um, look like the setting sun. And then you're supposed to put the plastic wrap on top of it tightly and let it sit overnight um, and come back and look at it later. It is supposed to make a nice little thing in here. We're going to see what happens with that. Like I said, mine's purple. It's not blue. So the middle is supposed to end up a purple color. We're going to get to see how it looks anyway. It does say to pack the tube tightly with crystals. However, here's what happened. Um, it says to fill it about half and so I tried to do about half, but then I didn't have enough red crystals to fill it up. Again, that's probably just the simple fact of whether or not we put the right amount of scoop in there. So we're going to leave it like this because I'm afraid if I put purple on top, it's going to close it out. We are going to cover it with plastic wrap and we are going to leave it sit and we will be back later tonight to check on this. Hello! Hello. We are back. We have been gone all night at the zoo. We've been joining our light show there and having a lot of fun seeing the animal. What was your favorite animal? Elephant. Elephant. I love the fennec fox, but he was not out to be seen. I was really sad. So, and also I like the vampire bats too. Yes, he likes vampire bats. Okay, so we have let our um, sunset in a tube sit there while we were gone all night long. It does say to let it sit overnight. It has been about nine hours since we did our video earlier, so it really has been about what overnight would be. So we're going to look at it. This is it. We have left it covered up with the plastic wrap like it says to do. Now I'm going to pull it off. Ooh. It does not look like I think exactly like it's supposed to do because the bottom is supposed to be a bluish color. What we do have is this wonderful blending from top to bottom, which is the whole point of this. I suppose if the bottom was the blue that it was supposed to be, it would be more noticeable. It does give a nice little gradient effect for this. So that's our sunset in the tube. Like I said, there's a lot more um, experiments in this kit, and we're definitely going to go back and do them. So I hope you do it and enjoy it. These are just some of the experiments in this kit. I really hope that you get it and try to try out some of the other experiments in it. Uh, we barely cracked the surface. There's other things that you can do. There's a regular volcano you can make and there's a whole thing about acids in base. I think it's a good kit. Uh, like I said, it says it is from four up. Josh had fun with them and he's 10, right? You had fun? Okay, the minion had fun with them and he's 10. I definitely give this uh, kit a thumbs up. I think it's a lot of fun to play with. We are going to go back and finish some more of the experiments later on our own time um, and, and do them. So I, I'm also a fan of how well the kit is put together. I said this with the other kit that we did. The test tubes are nice. They're nice and sturdy. Um, they give you extra. Most of the ingredients are things that you could go out and replace if you wanted to. If I had one minor complaint, it is that the color changing tablets, you really can only do that experiment once. It only gives you one of each color and once they're gone, it's done. However, it would be easy to go out and get food coloring and put the food coloring in the water and do that with it. So I think it's easily solvable. We did not do the ones that require the things like the flour and stuff for the sake of this video. But again, it's things like flour and there was a grape juice. Most everything else is like tape, water, pens, those sorts of things. Most of the ingredients are stuff you're probably already going to have in your house. All right, Minion, do you like this kit? You give it two thumbs up, one thumb up. What do you give? Five thumbs up. Five thumbs up. He's giving it five thumbs up. I'm going to give it two thumbs up too. I really enjoy these kits. I encourage you to go out and try it for yourself. They are a lot of fun. The Minion encourages you too. Thank you for joining us on this episode of CJ Discovery. Please be sure to click that like button if you enjoyed it. Please click subscribe if you'd like to see some more videos. We try to put these out every Saturday. Thanks. Go forth and discover on your own. Bye. Bye. Beetle, beetle, beetle. Two, two medium, one medium scoop of. Today we went out and got a for my. <laughs>
Oh my gosh, my tongue's not working today. Because for our last project, they didn't have any me. What? I don't know.